The foundation for trust is integrity. You know, one of the secrets to my success is not my education. The secret to my success is I only teach principles. That's it. You can never disagree with a principle. You can ignore it, you can hate it, but you can never disagree with it. Character is that way. Why do we call numbers characters? Because one is always one. Inspiring habit. And two is always two. Whether you are using it in the night or the day, it doesn't change. It's character. Why do we call statues characters? Because like Victoria, no matter what happens around them, they never change. Why do we call principles characters? Because principles are laws. They never change. Do you know when I did some research some years ago on the word in the Hebrew for holiness, I discovered that the root word for holy is one. The Hebrew concept of holiness is integrity. One. That means you are one. The number one confession in the Bible about God is the Lord our God is one. Now some you don't understand why that's important. If you were to talk to a Jewish rabbi right now in this city and ask him what is the most important confession in the Bible? They will tell you the Lord our God is one. What does it mean? It means he's holy. What is holy? You are one. This is very interesting. Holiness means you are integrated. You are not more than one person. You are not a different person on Monday that you are on Tuesday. You are not a different person in the night at 2 a.m. than you are in the pulpit on Sunday morning. You, you are one. You are not multi-personality. When the Bible says be holy, it's telling you be one. Stop being a hypocrite. It's character. That's why a person with character does not live on what's popular. They live on what is principle. And this is why it's very difficult for politicians to have character. Because politics is based on popularity, which means you will literally sacrifice your principles to protect your popularity, which cancels your character, which means you cannot be trusted. There are preachers who are politicians. They would sell their principles for a pot of porridge. No character. You know, people say power corrupts. I used to believe that that's not true power does not corrupt power simply reveals corruption you are already defective you finally got a chance to show it power is pure so the fall of man distorted the image of God what is image character so man became a defective character and the result of it is that his self-worth fell man didn't know how much he was worth anymore so ever since that man has been hiring, read my lips, read my lips, image consultants. Why would you hire an image consultant? Because you ain't got none. You ain't got no image. You lost it. If you know who you are, and you decide to be who you are, you don't need nobody to create another person. An image consultant is someone you pay to create a person that doesn't exist. Politicians hire image consultants. Why? They ain't got no image. So they pay people to tell lies. Movie stars, entertainers, they hire image consultants. Why? They have no image. So they sell you an image that don't exist and you buy it. And then when the real person shows up, you know, most people ask for forgiveness simply because they got caught. Character, therefore, is simply that which is unchanging. Write it down. Uh, my question is, how often do you change? Who are you? Are you the same person all the time? Are you consistent? Are you predictable? Leaders must have character. Why? Write this down. People will not follow you if they don't trust you. So character attracts loyalty. First of all, character is a commitment to a set of values without compromise. What are values? Values are things you value. That's all. Not complicated. For example, if you value your marriage vow, 
you will never commit adultery. So when a person commits adultery, they don't value their marriage, nor their marriage vows. See, your values will protect you. Secondly, character is the dedication to a set of standards without wavering. What are your standards that you've set for your life? My standards produce my character. I will never violate my standards. You got to say that every day. I do not tell lies. That's a standard. I do not steal. That includes stealing time from your job. Telling people you are sick when you are not sick. This is a lack of character. You are a thief. I wonder why you're smiling. Character is so subtle. There's no excuse in life for breaking your standards. Hear people say sometimes, honesty is my best policy. Now, whenever you tell me that, I do what Joseph did. Honesty should never be your best policy. Never. Because best policy means I have second best, third best, fourth best, fifth best. I can't trust you. You have no character. A person of character would say, honesty is my only policy. Thirdly, character is self-imposed discipline for the sake of moral convictions. That means a person of character doesn't need the police. They police themselves. A person of character locks themselves up in the prison of their own convictions and they throw away the key. Do you have character? Are you for sale? See, your future depends on your character, not your charisma. And most leaders, whether they are politicians, preachers, or parents, they try to live of their charisma. They try to live of their talent. They try to live of their gifts. Your gifts will never protect you. As a matter of fact, your gift will destroy you because the only thing that can protect your gift and your talent is your character. This session is the most important session you've ever sat in in your life because this is where you learn what protects your entire future and it's your character. And you've never been taught this in your whole life. I know you haven't. Your seminary never had a class on this. And that's why preachers are falling like flies. You know, I think about it. Character is really what I call a constant effort to integrate your words, your deeds, and your actions as one. The word integrate, integrate, means to become one. This is very important. So character is when your words, your deeds, and your actions are one. You are not schizophrenic. A person without character will say one thing, do another, and promise something else. So you never know who you're talking to when you're talking to them. No character. Now here's a surprise, number five. Character is sacrifice for principles. So character means you are willing to sacrifice friendship to protect your principles. You are willing to lose your best friend in order to keep your principles. Do you have character? Who are you with right now that you shouldn't be with? Think about it. What are you doing right now in secret that you shouldn't be doing? Are you willing to sacrifice that to protect your principles? Somebody offer to pay your mortgage off if you just sleep with them once. Would you sacrifice to protect your principles? Character. I like this last one. Character is simply integrity. Now look at integrity and look at integrate. They're the same word. Integrity means you are one with yourself. That means your word is always good. You say what you said, you do what you said, and then you act what you said. That's holiness. So wearing a long dress or a white collar with a purple shirt turned backward with a big chain in your pocket is not holiness. Wearing a long robe with a turban on your head doesn't impress me. I want to know if one person is under that robe, just one, you can call me. You know, you can bring your card to me and show me all your titles. Right, Reverend, Honorable, Bishop, Eternal, Sacred Man of God. I don't care what you say. I still don't trust you. I don't. Because I don't know which one of you I'm talking to. That's why the Bible says, know them that labor among you. Don't just bring anyone into your church to preach. 
even if they are on TV. Don't be attracted to charisma. Seek out character. Your life is the weight of your words. See, that's the problem with us. We, we think that we are impressed by our language, you know, these deep things we say and how good we can speak and preach and how we can, ah, hallelujah, yes, Lord. Listen, brother, you ain't got no life. You know, it's like, it's like a guy who sells diamond, but he ain't wearing none. Never trust a salesman who don't use what he's selling. I am a good father to my children, so you could believe my words. Let me put it this way. There's no such thing as a private life. So don't you ever tell people what I do in private is none of your business. It is my business because it determines whether I trust what you say publicly. It's called character. As a matter of fact, I've come to the conclusion that a person of character doesn't need to talk. They just show up. When I first met Nelson Mandela, it was the most overwhelming moment in my life. My God, when I saw him, I saw a character on two legs. He didn't have to speak. Do you know why? He went to prison for 18 years plus seven and never changed his conviction. That's why you respect him. You know what the Bible says about uh, parenting? The Bible says, fathers, do not exasperate your children. Now, some of you don't know what that big word means, so I'll explain it to you. The word exasperate means to frustrate because of instability. You tell your child, don't smoke. And you are smoking. You are creating a monster in your house. Character protects your words. God is more concerned about your character than your dominating the earth. Character is God's prerequisite for dominion and rulership. Character is God's foundation for leadership. God says, look, before I give you power, let me give you the most important thing. Here's image. What is image? Characteristic. You are stable just like me. I could trust you with power. Three things will test your character. Only three things. There are three things that will manifest your character. They will tell you whether you have character or not. Three things. The first one, power. When you give a person power, their character shows up. Number two, money. When you give a human a lot of money, their real self shows up. And number three, access to sex. If you give a human access to sex, their character shows up or their lack of it. Only three things. So if you want to know what a woman really is, give her power, money, and access to sex. You want to know what a man is really like? Give him power, money, and access to sex. And that is why every human on this earth that have ever failed was because of either power, money, or sex. Period. Character. The Bible says the race is not to the swift. See, you could be famous instantly, man. But in the kingdom of God, the race is not to the swift. Who gets to the top first? The race is to him who endures to the end. Will you still be around when I come back 10 years from now? Or will you still be the same person? That's the question. Queen Victoria is still there. 289 years later, she outlived every storm, every hurricane. I wonder if you'll still be standing when all the temptations have passed. The only way to test character is by temptation. Write it down. The word temptation is not a negative word. Tempering, to temper, write the word temper, to to, to tempt or to temper means to test for weakness. That's all it means. You will never ever have a time in your life when you are free from temptation. Never. So get over it. Get used to it. Tempting will constantly be in your life to monitor your character. Character is as strong as the temptation you fell for. I want you to make it. That means you got to make a decision in this room before you leave. That you are going to get rid of things that can destroy your character. And that might include some friends. That includes some habits. You are in danger. You are as safe as your character. All that you've built, everything you've built, with your whole life could be destroyed in five seconds. Ask Jimmy Swigert. Do you know what made Eve pick the fruit? It wasn't difficult. Satan says, look. Do you want to be like God? That was the temptation. What is God? Power. 
Of course, he lied to her because she was already like God. But Satan will always tempt you with what you already are. So your greatest danger is ignorance of self. You cannot tempt me to be what I know I already am. So somewhere Eve became ignorant of who she was. So Satan tempted her for weakness. Do you want to be like God? Well, read the verse. Let us make man in our own image and like us. She already was like God. But ignorance will make you disbelieve yourself. God gave character before power. God created you and you were given the mandate to dominate earth with God's character. It's not a difficult thing. You're a king, just like your father. But your territory is earth. Therefore, image is the first thing God gave you. And God gave you that because he knew that without character, the power will destroy you. You think you're safe, huh? You better protect your character.